anyone who doesn't get to the store for a few days, you'll understand just how important this type of packaging is. But for all of the conveniences of this carton, until recently, it wasn't able to be locally recycled here in Australia. And just think about how many of these you use every week. That's a huge waste problem. Until 2019, Australia was shipping more than 8,000 tonnes of these cartons overseas to be recycled. But thanks to Tetra Pak and SaveBoard, the cartons can now be turned directly into this right here in Australia. So Laura, this is the finished product that's ready to be transported to wherever it's going. And that's how it comes in, in those bales. So I love looking at these bales because by checking out the brands that are in them and what the cartons look like, you can tell what state they've come from or how they were collected. Where in the past would containers like these end up? Yeah, Laura, so most of the beverage cartons that people were putting in their recycling bins would have been sorted with mixed paper and would have ended up at a paper recycler somewhere in the world where the demand for paper is high. And what has changed? A few things have changed. So China changed its policy around recyclable materials that they would accept, and they're a big buyer of paper. They still are a big buyer of paper. And so where does Tetra Pak fit in? We decided that we wanted a local solution. Tetra Pak's aim globally is to make sure that our cartons don't end up in litter or don't end up not recycled. We want to get them recycled everywhere we can. And, and our play in this space really is to work with innovative companies like SaveBoard to find recycling solutions that work locally, like in this instance in Australia. Cartons like Tetra Pak have revolutionised food storage. Long life cartons store fragile foods like milk for up to two years without refrigeration, which is a gold standard. And cartons are easy to store and ship. What about the shape of these packs? <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> yeah, they are. I talk about it being a nerdy brick shape, but actually it really helps. I mean, you can see on the shelf that it actually packs really well. And from a supermarket's perspective, it means I can get more product on the shelf, so it's less labour cost in just being able to stack shelves. But, you know, this has a serious environmental consequences. Because it packs together well, it means you get more product in a box, you get more product on a pallet, you get more product in a truck, in a container, so that all the shipping carbon emissions mm -hmm. are significantly reduced. It's also really light. Like, we use the least material compared to other forms of packaging to hold a beverage. And that means less material means less environmental impact because you've just used less of the stuff. As consumers, we believe recycling into the curbside bin is doing our bit. However, there is an even better way to ensure the right waste gets to the right recycler. This one looks like the one we had in the store. Yeah, it is actually. That's the one that we picked out there. And you can see here the oak chocolate that we were looking at in the store, and you can also see the straws that go in with the stream and caps that are still on, that all get recycled together. So Laura, the key to better recycling is actually better sorting. We've actually just implemented a artificial intelligence robot to sort beverage cartons from commingled bins, from recycling bins, uh, and they're gonna start coming here, and we'd love to expand that around the country. It really is impressive that everything, including the plastic, can be recycled into SaveBoard one of the reasons why I think this is a great way to do it. So once the waste is sorted, what then? How is SaveBoard actually made? What's going on here is we get a bunch of waste product coming in and we turn it into SaveBoard. After the, the products are collected in the container deposit schemes around the country, they arrive here in bales and we separate them down onto the process where we chop them up, we mix them up together with other little components of, of plastics and we put them through and we cook them just like a toasted cheese sandwich and we produce SaveBoard. Total of SaveBoard is 99.5% recycled product. As the board then comes through, it's then palletized and ready for sale. And you can see all the bits and pieces of material all throughout the board. So every type of material that you use in SaveBoard actually comes in these cartons already? That's right. All of the products we need to make SaveBoard are in that one carton. And what about colours and sizes and shapes? Does any of that matter with your cartons? That's the fantastic thing about SaveBoard. It makes no difference. When you look closely at SaveBoard, you can actually see logos and some text. What is that? That's right. Look, it's a great thing about SaveBoard that when we get the product, we shred it, and we shred it to about a, a size where you can still visibly see that it's waste packaging. So you can really see that provenance of that's my waste that went into the container deposit scheme 
ending up as so bored. Yeah, it's a perfect all-round messaging of here's my waste and here's the end product and I'm doing something good with it. Why did you choose a building product as the end product for Saveboard? Saveboard is able to be used as a plasterboard replacement, uh, MDF, um, plywood replacement, ceiling tiles. So it has enormous scale to solve for an enormous recycling problem. Low carbon, water resistant, mold resistant, heavy impact, um, and it's got all of the other functional benefits that any other building material that it's trying to replace. When it is finished for use, we can recycle it again and again and again. And will you turn it back into Saveboard? Straight back into Saveboard. Saveboard's popularity is growing fast. There's already big brands installing the board in public areas. Hi Laura, I'm Crystal. Hey Crystal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, come on in, I'll show you the board. Great. Crystal, why are these boards in this area? Uh, well, this is a very high traffic area. So these boards are actually really easy to clean. Yeah, so you can actually see the waste packaging in the walls. You can see little bits and pieces of writing. Yeah, you can feel it and see it. There's lots of different colours. Yeah. The high impact resistance of the board makes it a great choice for commercial spaces that get a lot of bumps. What we'd love is for developers, builders, big construction companies to see a viable product in use in a place like this and know that they can use it as well. Currently, the best way to ensure that your used cartons end up in Saveboard is to drop them off at a container deposit centre and you get some money back too. We think we've got a really valuable resource in a carton and we want to see that resource used again and again. We would like people to know there is a home for the used packaging material and that's Saveboard. Every time you choose a product, choose something that you know is made with a natural material and that has a local recycling solution. You want your purchasing choices to make a difference in the world. Recycling will win in the end, won't it? <laughs> well, I think recycling should win in the end because we need to do more with our natural resources.